वेलकम टू फिजिक्स हब एज यू नो वी आप यूज टू अपलोड ए सेट वीडियो ऑन एवरी संडे द सेट वीडियो वुड कॉन्सिस्ट ऑफ टेन सॉल्व प्रॉब्लम्स फ्रॉम डिफरेंट फिट टॉपिक्स ऑफ फिजिक्स वी अपलोडेड सच ट्वेंटी फोर सेट वीडियोज दैट मीन्स ट्वेंटी टू हंड्रेड फोर्टी सॉल्व प्रॉब्लम्स टिल थर्टी एथ ऑफ डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी एट्टीन द then we stopped uploading the sunday set videos due to some unavoidable reasons but from now onwards we are starting it again so today is 17th of march 2019 sunday and here i am with a new set video we generally upload the question paper on our facebook page a little earlier so that you can try to solve the questions and match your answers when the solutions are uploaded now one thing whenever you upload a video we distribute it into different playlist relatable playlist so go through the playlist and you will be able to get videos as per your choice and keep a track of our community page as well it will help you to make your base strong now without any further delay let's start today's set video so this is set 25 and this set contains questions from solid state physics section the first question reads When a laser light of wavelength lambda falls on a metal scale with 1 mm engravings at a crossing angle of incidence it is diffracted to form a vertical chain of diffraction spots on a screen kept perpendicular to the scale if the wavelength of the laser is increased by 200 nm the angle of the first order diffraction spot changes from 5 degree to you are given four options so this is the situation so wavelength of uh, some light of wavelength lambda is falling onto the uh, metal scale and you are getting some diffraction spots the metal scale with engravings will act as a reflection grating and the condition for the energy of the diffraction maxima in case of grating is given by this equation d cos theta equals to n lambda where n has got integral values and d is the separation between two conjugative rulings on the scale so this is the case uh, for grating you know and theta is the angle of diffraction now what it says the wavelength of the laser light is increased by 200 nm so lambda becomes lambda plus 200 then d this theta will be changed the angle of diffraction will be changed so d cos theta prime because d is same same metal same meter scale you are using so d is same so d cos theta prime equals to n into in place of lambda we are just placing lambda plus 200 so till now we consider lambda in nanometer so we are not converting it here now what we are doing we are just subtracting equation 1 uh, from equation 2 so d into cos theta prime minus cos theta will be 200 in lambda and lambda got constant 200 is in nanometer but we have to uh, keep it in same unit same and si unit is always preferred so 200 into n minus 9 but in some cases you can use you can prefer cgs unit it depends upon the situation but in general we use si unit so d into this equal to 200 into n minus 9 and the information is given to you is theta initial theta and you have to uh, calculate the final theta okay so theta equal to 5 degree n equals to 1 d equals to 10 to minus 3 meter therefore we get cos theta prime simply by replacing these values into this equation we are getting cos theta prime to be 0.9963 and from there you get theta prime equal to cos inverse of this will equal to 5.14 degree so <coughs> option 2 is the correct option second question consider the crystal structure of a sodium chloride which is modeled as a set of touching spheres Each sodium atom has a radius r1 and each chlorine atom has a radius r2. The centers of the spheres from form a simple cubic lattice. The packing fraction of this system is okay. So radius of n atom is r1 and radius of Cl atom is r2. Therefore packing fraction as you know this is a formula equal to volume of atoms in the unit cell divided by volume of unit cell. Now <coughs> eight atoms are there. and four of them of uh, this na and the rest of them should be taken of chlorine now for this 
we know that um, the in case of simple cubic lattice you see that one atom is shared by one by eight one atom is shared by eight we eight nearby atom so we can we can we calculate it as one by eight into eight okay but here look only four atom of na is considered so you will get half half of this so half into four third pi r1 cube plus half into four third pi r2 cube divided by volume uh, this volume of unit cell means here r1 plus r2 equals to a that is constant a so r1 plus r2 whole cube and it is equals to twice pi by 3 into r1 cube plus r2 cube divided by r1 plus r2 whole cube and it is matching with option 2 so option 2 is the correct option now question number 3 consider two crystalline solids one which has a simple cubic structure and the other has a tetragonal structure the effective spring constant between atoms in the c direction is half the effective spring constant between atoms in the a and b directions at low temperatures the behavior of the lattice contribution to the specific heat will depend as a function of temperature t as and you are given four options now as you know that the lattice specific heat of a 3d crystal is independent of the crystal system hence lattice heat capacity for both the crystal would be proportional to t cube d by t cube so the form was like this so initially in, in low temperature regime it is t cube it is showing a dependence of t cube and later on it is constant and gives value of cr so option four is the correct option next question number four a superconducting ring carries a steady current in the presence of a magnetic field b normal to the plane of the ring identify the incorrect statement so the first statement we see the flux passing through the superconducting ring is quantized in the units of hc by e but as you know that uh, the flux passing through the superconductor is quantized in units of hc by 2e but here you are given hc by e so this is the uh, incorrect statement okay so this should be the answer okay so for your um, enhancement of knowledge you should remember the other three points also because those three points are correct so the what are those things the current and magnetic field in the superconductor time independent so do, you should know about it the current density j and b are related to the uh, by the equation curl of j plus lambda square b okay so it should, that should be <coughs> equal to zero here where lambda is a constant because otherwise it is not an equation so it's a printing mistake the superconductor shows an energy gap which is proportional to the transition temperature of the superconductor okay so this is there is a formula uh, in the case of superconductor eg means band of or energy gap of superconductor is 7 by 2 into kb into tc 7 by 2 kb means both constant is k into tc tc is the critical temperature in superconductivity. Now question number 5. The pressure of a non-relativistic free Fermi gas in 3 dimension depends at t equals to 0 on the density of fermions n h. So this is a very standard question. We have to find out the pressure. Now before finding out the pressure you should know about the Fermi energy. The Fermi energy in 3D is given by this well known expression of Fermi energy EF equals to h cut square by 2m into 3 pi square capital N by B to the power 2 by 3 means h cut square by 2m 3 pi square N to the power 2 by 3 where N is the electron concentration and for this case we have to consider it as the density of fermions now the average energy for fermions in uh, zero temperature I think yes E0 bar T equals to 0 is 3 by 5 into EF. So this is for one fermion. Then the total energy of the non-relativistic free Fermi gas, if the number of fermions is capital N, then it would become N into A0 bar, means 3 by 5 N into EF. Now we just put the value of EF here. Now what is the expression for pressure? Pressure is given by minus del V by del V at constant N. So we just take the derivative of this expression with respect to V. And we see a dependence of n by v to the power 5 by 3. And the rest of the term can be taken to be constant. 
so pressure is proportional to n to the power 5 by 3 and it is matching with option 1 so option 1 is the correct option question number 6 consider an electron in BCC body centered cubic lattice with the lattice constant a a single particle wave function that satisfies the block theorem will have the form f of r exponential i k dot r with a f of r b so if you go to solve this question by the property of uh, block theorem means the characteristic of block theorem which is this psi k of r equal to u k of r e to the power i k dot r f of r equal to into e to the power k dot r where f r f of r is a atomic wave function which has the periodicity of the lattice means u k of r plus a would be equals to u k of r so if you uh, just put if you just check this function by putting um, the lattice constant means if you um, go to solve this problem by using this property means this periodicity property then it would become very clumsy but you can use a simple trick that that whenever you are given a lattice BCC then the reciprocal lattice is FCC and the um, translational vectors for FCC matches with this if the lat primitive lattice translational vectors so BCC is this then FCC will be this so this is quite similar to this option B and option C but uh, our answer will be question B because look if we take uh, cos pi of something then there may be some negative sign may appear so that will not give you the correct periodicity but if you take these options these two pi things then it will give you the periodicity so option B is the correct option so sometimes in questions you don't need to solve the entire problem rigorously sometimes you need to use special tricks and special technique to find out the answer and the examiner, examiner said the question keeping in mind that fact that you should be able to utilize the special trick otherwise it will get very clumsy and it will be very difficult for you to solve the problem next question number seven the dispersion relation for electrons in an FCC crystal is given in the type bending approximation by this expression where a is the lattice constant epsilon naught is a constant with the dimension of energy the x component of the velocity of electron at pi by a 0 0 is so this is also a very good question and a simple question too so as we know the expression for velocity is given by 1 by h cos d by dk and epsilon means energy the expression of energy is given by this expression minus 4 epsilon naught cos k x by k by 2 plus cos k y a by 2 plus cos k y a by 2 plus hmm. there is some missing term here in the question ok so uh, this term would be added so the book from where I have taken this question they did not give it correctly so an extra term will come here so 1 by h cut this is this is the expression of energy correct expression of energy so 1 by h cut d by dkx i cap plus d by dky j cap plus d by dkz k cap equal to this so we have to calculate the x component of the velocity of electron so we just we're just taking the x component so d by dkx so you are taking the derivative with respect to kx and upon taking we get uh, it equals to 4 epsilon naught e by h cut so option 4 is the correct option we are just taking the derivative and putting this value of kx ky kz here in this expression and it is matching with option d so option d is the correct option the energy of an electron in a band as a function of its wave vector k is given by e k equals to u naught minus b into k s cos k x a plus cos k y a plus cos k z a where e naught b and a are constant so, the effective mass of the electron near the bottom of the band is 
so this is the expression of energy near the bottom of the band k tends to 0 means cos kx equal into a equals to 1 minus kx into a whole square by 2 so as you know that cos x equals to 1 minus x square by 2 plus x to the power 4 by 4 plus minus dot 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 but k is approximately 0 so the first term and the second term will survive other term is negligibly small so we can neglect them so we are just replacing the values of cos kx a cos k q a cos k z a using these approximations and we are getting a modified form of energy which is this and we see that it can be written as e naught minus b into 3 minus half a into a square into k square and therefore d by dk equal to a square bk and d square by dk square equal to a square b therefore the effective mass of the electron at the bottom of the band is m star equals to h cut square by d square by dk square so that is equal to h cut square by b a square so and this matching with option 4 so option 4 is the correct option now moving to question number 9 a gold crystal has a fcc lattice with one gold atom per lattice constant of uh, 4.08 angstrom every gold atom has one valence electron the Fermi energy of the gold crystal is so what you, what what are the things we are given we are given lattice constant and fcc lattice then you have to find out the Fermi energy so now the first of all the expression of Fermi energy equal to h cut square by 2 n 3 pi square n to the power 2 by 3 the only unknown quantity here is n the electron or uh, concentration the number of density of free electrons so now we just we have to just find out the number density of free electron which is equal to lattice point by lattice constant q means the volume of the uh, unit cell and this is the number of lattice points in the unit cell so in case of fcc we, we know that the corner atoms are shared by eight atoms so one by eight into eight and the uh, atoms which are lying on the face uh, are shared by six atoms and con the contribution is one by two so one by two into six and, uh, and plus one by eight into eight this is the number of lattice points so lattice constant q the lattice constant is given 108 so it's q so we are getting 5.89 10 to the 28 per meter cube we are just replacing the values here and we get uh, the expression of fermi energy we are getting the value of the fermi energy to be 5.528 electron volt and it is matching with option one so option one is the correct option now question number 10 according to josephson junction josephson effect if we apply a static potential v naught across the junction it leads to the production of alternating current if the value of the v naught is 10 millivolt the frequency of current will be okay the frequency of the junction of current is f equals to twice e v naught by 2 pi h cut so basically omega means 2 pi f equals to twice e v naught by h cut now we have to find out the frequency not the angular frequency so 2 pi you have to divide it by 2 pi so we are just replacing the values of v naught by 10 millivolt and h cut 1.055 unit is 34 joule second and we are getting 4.85 unit in the 12 hertz and it is matching with option 1 so option 1 is the correct option and this is the end so i have tried my best to provide the solutions in great detail irrespective of this if you have any doubts or confusions or query you can comment down below i will try my best to clarify them all and any kind of suggestions are always welcome so this is all for today guys if you find this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and if you are a new visitor of this channel please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss any update Keep sharing, keep loving and keep exploring the wonders of physics and finally thanks for watching.